So in the last lesson, we understood what happens to the gravitational force on a particle when it is outside the Earth. Well, it turns out that what happens inside the Earth is even more interesting. So to start with, if you're placed inside the Earth, you will have one shell of Earth that is outside, the one in which, so to say, you are shelled, and the other is the one on which you are standing. So you can expect to be pulled by the gravitational force of one, the outer shell, and two, the inner smaller Earth. So Newton's shell theorem explains that the net force of gravitation on a body inside a shell is always zero. Now, you must remember that various parts of the shell are creating a gravitational force on you, but the net sum of these forces or the vector sum of these forces equals zero. In fact, if you start pulling vectors from yourself to various parts of the shell, you can intuitively realize that the vector sum will turn out to be zero. So we can put aside the shell outside you that has zero gravitational force on you and focus on the inner small earth. Now, the smaller earth on which you are standing will have a gravitational force that can be given as F is equal to GM into MSE upon R squared. So let's go ahead and write this formula and understand what are the various terms. So the force of gravitation on you due to smaller earth is equal to G into small m, which is your mass, into mass of the smaller earth divided by r square, where r is the radius of the smaller earth. And if you assume that the density of earth is uniform, which it is not, but for the sake of understanding the theory, let us assume so, we can say that the density of earth, rho earth, is equal to mass upon its volume. And here we'll take the mass of the actual full earth which is capital m divided by its volume which is 4 by 3 pi r cube where r is again the radius of the full earth and if you we were to write the mass of smaller earth m s e in terms of product of density of earth into its volume what you'll get is density is m upon 4 by 3 pi r cube and its volume or the volume of the smaller earth would be 4 by 3 pi small r cube. So let's go ahead and cancel these terms which are cancelable and what we get is the mass of smaller earth m s e can now be written as m into small r cube divided by capital R cube. And if you were to substitute this value into this equation, what you'll get is the force of gravitation on you due to the small earth is equal to G into small m upon R square into the mass of small earth. And we'll substitute this expression over here. So we multiply this with m into small r cube divided by capital R cube. And let's go ahead and cancel the small r over here. We get one single r up over here. And therefore, we can write that the force of gravitation on you is equal to g into your mass into mass of the full earth divided by the radius of the full earth into the radius of the small earth. Now, you can clearly see that this expression is a constant because the mass of earth is constant. That is the full earth over here and capital R, which is the radius of the full earth is a constant. So we can write this expression as force of gravitation on U is equal to constant K into R. And if we convert this into a vector form, what you get is the force of gravitation on U is equal to minus K into R, where R is the position vector of the particle. In this case, u from the center of the earth and f is a force vector on you. Now, the negative sign indicates that the force vector is pointing in the direction that is opposite to the position vector. For example, if you are over here, your position vector is this, but your force vector is acting in a direction opposite to your position vector. So if you pause and think for a moment about this equation we've just written, what you'll find is that it is exactly the same equation that describes the motion of a block attached to a spring. 
So do we say that if you were to fall inside the earth, your R value reduces and your motion will be same as that of a box attached to a spring and in motion? Or in a way, would you obey Hooke's law? Well, yes, this is pretty much true. The force vector on you due to gravitation of the earth will be a linear function of your position vector and at the center of the earth, the gravitational force on you will become zero since R value becomes zero. But due to the velocity you have gained while moving towards the center, you continue to move beyond the center and towards the other end of the earth and this will continue that is you'll keep moving back and forth towards the two ends of the earth forever if there was no air drag or external force inside the shaft. Now another thing you must notice is that the moment you go beyond the center of the earth you again start getting attracted towards the center per this equation and at a physical level what is happening is that the earth mass that is under your feet as you move more and more away from the center tends to pull you in. So you would tend to oxalate like a block on spring about the center of the earth that would be the mean position. So if you were to plot a graph between R value and the gravitational force, it would look something like this, where from center of the earth to the surface of the earth, the force would be a linear function of the position vector r, but beyond the surface of the earth, it will change as the inverse of position vector square value as we learnt in the earlier lesson.